Okay, so this is gonna be a full breakdown of my homemade exothermic torch build. Um, I'm gonna try and cover pretty much front to back everything I used, where I got it from, how much it was, or if I something you can't get, I will try and give you another option. It works, uh, bottom line. It's a very simple concept. Exothermic torches are nothing more than an oxygen valve or an oxygen source, a valve, and some way to couple the rod end. That's it. And then they run off a 12 volt source to spark them. Nothing really fancy there. So here's what we've got on the basic overview front to back. I've got a oxygen valve that I stole off of an old torch that I had, coupled into a little like paddle air valve, just like a blowgun valve. As we go down, this is just regular pipe, just black iron pipe, stuff you'd get off of the shelf at uh, Menards or Home Depot or just about anywhere. This is a little shield, it's stainless steel. Uh, I need to knock some splatter off of it, but just kind of something that I bent up real quick because this thing will throw sparks and will throw hot and molten slag back at you. This is where it gets a little bit different. This is a quarter inch to five eighths collet. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon. I will try and throw a picture in here real quick so you guys can get a part number. Coupled to a special nut, or actually it's a bolt that I drilled all the way through, and then a 5 8 compression fitting. So we'll go ahead and start at the front here and then work our way back. Okay, so we'll start at the business end or the coupling end. Uh, this was my very first version. Um, Pretty simple, so these are just eighth inch, um, eighth inch rod, kind of pretty standard. Uh, my first concept was just using compression fittings, and it works, but it doesn't. If you look at the tip here, focus, there we go, you'll see that these are like a rolled steel and they have this edge seam in there. That edge seam, right, will not. Uh, will not seat right with the compression fitting. So you would put this in here and then you would break two ends in here. You put that in there and you kind of fight it in there and yeah, it would hold and it would work. Obviously I was able to use it before and burn a couple rods that way. It, it works, but it doesn't work great. You actually get some oxygen that leaks by here and I wasn't really a big fan of that. So on uh, my final update here, I went out kind of in search of a better collet design uh, looking at the way the manufacturers actually build theirs, they use a collet style chuck, which looks something like this. This happens to be a half inch collet chuck, uh, but kind of what you would see like in a, uh, in a die grinder. So that actually came with the kit that I'm going to link in the, or I'm going to actually put a picture of somewhere right about here. Give some time to screenshot that. But that is this first piece. This is a collet chuck. So we can unscrew it here. Um, standard eighth inch, or I'm sorry, quarter inch, not eighth, my bad. Quarter inch collet. And it fits these perfectly. These guys slide right in the end of there. And when you lock that down, it locks down good and tight. You actually don't, you could put a wrench on there, but you can even just do it hand tight and it's fine. Now, the big difference is I didn't use the collet to actually seat the end of the rod. So I found out by doing a little bit of research and just some looking that the rods themselves are like in the uh, professional guns that are $1,400, by the way. All they do is they use a flat washer at the bottom. Kind of hard to see. Yeah, there you go. You can see that flat washer in the bottom. And all that flat washer is is a uh, right there faucet washer. I got a pack of, I think, 10 of them for a dollar. And they will wear out. They will go bad. You'll have to replace them. They even sell you replacement ones for the real deal. The only difference is they're uh, flat washers. I believe our, I was looking at the repair kits, are 50 bucks for a repair kit. So quite a bit of difference. So we'll put that collet thread back in there. Now this piece actually is a 5 8 by 7 to quarter and half inch chuck adapter designed for angle grinders, believe it or not. You would put this on the end of your angle grinder, like your four and a half inch, 
and then you would put a burr bit in here. Crank it down, lock it in, and you go to town like that. But this works out way, way better. Uh, well, at least works for what I'm doing. Now, here's the thing you're going to have to build that might be a little challenging. So, this is a three-quarter pipe thread to five-eighths, just regular compression-style fitting. Uh, pull it out of there. And this is a five-eighths by seven bolt. Looks something about like that or would have. I cut it off, and then this will thread on the end. I use a nut just as a kind of a locker in the back, just to keep everything solid. And then, this is off center, but it doesn't really matter. All you're looking for, the one that does matter, you need your hole. I'm going to take this out. I would take this apart, but I actually glued that on really good, and I can't get it apart. It's kind of a real pain. I don't want to mar this up, because I need it to seal. So, what you really need is you need a good sealing surface and a fairly straight hole right down the center when you drill that bolt. So... That's about the only piece you really need to make or manufacture yourself for this project. Everything else can be bought off the store, and even then, I highly doubt you'd ever burn through that bolt. If you did, you buy another one for a whopping 50 cents at the hardware store, you're done. So, 5 eighths to 3 quarter adapter. Let's see if we can wiggle that back in there. Just a compression style fitting, nothing fancy, nothing. Again, everything I've done here is stuff you can get off the hardware store. I think this guy was six bucks. I'll try and make a price list overall of everything I've spent, put it down in the comments. That way you get an idea of what this actually costs you to build. That's the business end. Now we'll move on to the body and the trigger end and how to hook it up to oxygen. All right, so the body. Everything you pretty much see here is just three-quarter pipe. In some form or another, the handle's three-quarter pipe. I might wrap that up with some plastic or something, but again, the concept of this was replaceable parts. Something breaks, something gets bent, damaged, destroyed, whatever. Everything here can be bought online. And for less than, I think the most expensive piece is going to be that blowgun end. Actually, no, it's going to be the collet end, and that was 20 bucks. Either way... You can make this any way you want. I made three-quarter pipe. This right here is a grounding lug that uh, you need to be able to spark a 12-volt source to these with either a set of jumper cables or however you like. This is mine. It's just some half-inch square or some half-inch uh, by one-inch bar hole drilled in it that I'm going to run a lug to. I also welded a stainless steel shield to this pipe. Mainly speaking is when you're using this thing, it will shoot molten metal back out at you especially if you're trying to blow through a pin. Safety is kind of a key thing, so that's what I wanted. A little bit of a safety shield. Nothing really fancy, but it gets the job done. T-fitting. Nothing really fancy here either. Just, you know, like I said, oxygen comes in, and we go to our T-fitting and working our way back. I've got, a, I think this is three-quarter to half to three-quarter, half to three-eighths, three-eighths to three-eighths, and then on the end here, a little bit. We have a three-eighths to quarter and then a quarter to our oxygen fitting. Now, those astute of you among you will notice that happens to be an oxygen valve. It came off a torch that I happen to have, an old KT Tools one that's no longer in service. I don't use it's kind of junky, but the valve still works. That being said, I could not find one of these turnstile or valves. I could not find one on Amazon. I tried looking around. It doesn't really matter. You don't really need this valve. All you do need, though, is this Milton blowgun valve. Now, this one happens to be directional. I learned that. You can only have air coming in one way or pressure in one way and pressure out the other side, not the other way around. If you try to put pressure in this side and pressure out, it will not work. It'll just blow right through. So be wary. You can use pretty much any blowgun valve you want. I've heard of guys using pressure washer handles. Uh, that might be a little more ergonomic or a little more comfortable depending on who you are. Again, works for me. Everything here is cheap. I know where to buy these at. Those can be bought at the store. 
What I did find for this, or at least for a replacement piece, is a strictly quarter inch NPT to, I believe these are 1H UF or 14 UF threads. Either way, it's an oxygen fitting. It's what all oxygen fittings or oxygen bottles use for welding. Pretty common. Um, or, I mean, hey, if you had an old torch, you might be able to find one at your local welding supply. They might have these in stock because they might rebuild torches. Who knows? Either way, the one I found was about four bucks, give or take. I didn't find it on Amazon. I think it was on Air Gas, which eh, some guys don't like them. Whatever. I'm just trying to give you ideas of where to find the stuff. Otherwise, everything else, you can buy it. Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, it's all black pipe. It's nothing fancy, nothing special. You don't need to spend $1,400 on buying yourself, you know, an exothermic slice torch. Now, the one thing, you're going to want to use the actual rods. I've heard a guy saying you can just roll up some mild steel. This, like, waxy stuff is an actual flux coating designed to burn with it and help burn longer so you don't burn them up so quick. Um, these are worth their, these are worth buying, buy the right ones, but you don't have to buy a $1,400 torch. You can get away with making this entire deal. And like I said, I'll try and give you a full total, but I know we're under a hundred bucks. So here at the end, I'll run a little music and I will try and go through and give you a spreadsheet of what everything's going to cost you to build this specific setup. Again, you're welcome to build your own. Yours may vary. Do what you want. But this gives you a full rundown. If you want an exothermic, a slice torch, something to punch pins, cut through steel. And I mean, I'm not talking an inch thick steel. I'm talking four inches of steel, five inches of steel. This will do it, and it'll do it all day long real cheap. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Have fun. Don't hurt yourself, I guess.